Um, can you quickly tell us who you are and what your professional background is? Sure. My name is Greg Lisby. I'm at the moment the Associate Chair of the Department of Communication at Georgia State University. Uh, my background is law. I have a PhD from University of Tennessee and a law degree from Georgia State, and I'm a member of the bar, the State Bar of Georgia, so I practice in Georgia. The area that I research is copyright law, and also I deal with ethics, especially ethics with regard to journalists and with regard to lawyers. Ah, and that's, that's, that's the relevant part. Okay. Um, <laughs> would maintaining a friendship with a journalistic source outside of, of the field be a breach of journalism ethics? And if it's not a breach of journalism ethics, you are walking a very fine line. I mean, think about it just for a second. Whether it's a family member or a friend, and let's just put the journalist aside. This is me and you as friends. What can I expect of you as a friend? What can you expect of me as a friend? Well, we would hope that each of us would try to put the other person's interest before people we don't know. I mean, that's what friends do. Well, let the machine get that. That's all right with you. Um, if, if we let the, if we let, put the other people's interest first, okay, fine, we're friends, right? But think about it with regard to what happens if you're a journalist and I'm a friend. Well, fine as long as you're not writing anything about what I'm dealing with here. Because the minute you start writing that, whether I'm an inventor and you're writing about my invention, whether I'm a, uh, this person, it doesn't make a bit of difference. The minute you start writing about that, the minute happens where you run the risk of violating ethics because you get so close to the source, are you biased? Now, what about... Um how close of a friendship are we talking here? What about the, the need to maintain connections in an industry you were covering in order to simply know who's who and what's going on? Well, maintaining connections is what I would call professional collegiality. That's not uncommon. But maintaining connections is not the same thing. Having a Rolodex full of names to contact about this or about that is not the same thing as friendship. So really, it becomes, it becomes at what point that professional relationship crosses the line. And usually the point it crosses the line is the point at which you consciously or unconsciously start doing things for the other person. Uh, in the news just this past week was the big ethics commission in the state of Georgia that, that they fired the executive director, the executive secretary of, and the question was, did she act in a way that brought defamation, brought, brought shame on the, on the commission? And they felt like, yes, because she indicated her desire to crush the investigation of the governor, that then suggested a relationship that was not an unbiased one. And I, I'm, I predict that she has no relationship with the governor. I predict that, that there's no friendship, that there's no, nothing other than she was seeking to, to do something in, that would work out in the favor of the governor. Well, in doing so, she's crossed the line because she's, she's clearly shown that she's not objective. And that's the challenge for journalists. What are you doing and how does it make you objective or not? In field of journalism, there is a whole array of things and a little like lobbyists for legislatures. You know, how much of a gift can you receive before the gift results in you being not objective? You know, can I give you, you know, can I give you a Christmas card? Well, generally, I think most people would say a Christmas card would not necessarily make you biased in some way. Can I give you a gift of some value? Well, maybe, but how much value? Could I, give you a, could I give you a ruler that had my company's name on it? You see what I'm trying to get at here? Yeah. There's, there's this line that you have to sort of go up the line. You know, can, I, can I take you out to dinner? Would you say that funding a source's creative projects crosses that line? Absolutely. <laughs> no doubt in my mind whatsoever. If you're the writer and I'm the inventor or I'm the, I'm the creator here in some way, and somehow we have a monetary relationship that is, we hope, going to result in my success, then for you to write about me, that's unethical. Now, what about being roommates with a, with a potential source? I was asking even worse. <laughs> now, I have heard when, in the political realm where people say, oh, I'm a political operative for this person, and she's a political operative for this person, and oh, we don't, we don't, you know, we don't do things like that. But I think it's going to create problems.
and I guess, uh, would you consider a sexual relationship crossing that line as well? Absolutely. <laughs> now, but what about, what about say, uh, a half hour drink and conversation at a um, industry event with a potential source? And see, drinking at an event, and again, I'm assuming you're both buying your own drinks here. Right, right. Uh, that's, that's, that's a little harder to see because all of us go to conferences, all of us go to meetings, all of us go, for some reason, there to network, quote unquote, to at least let other people have some idea who we are. So to say you've met somebody at a conference or you had a drink with somebody at a conference is not quite as the questionable as it is if you have this, this type of relationship, which is a personal relationship. Okay. Um, how could a journalist best maintain that kind of professional relationship and make sure that they don't get close? Too close for for ethical uh, right. um, impartiality. I mean, first off, you have to, it, there has to be a clear understanding of who you are. I mean, your obligation is to write, we hope, truth that is newsworthy. And so if at any point you start messing with either of those criteria, that's either it's not truthful or you try to make something newsworthy that's not newsworthy, you run into problems. Okay. Um, and And... I assume, I don't know, I, I'm making an assumption here, but that you don't closely follow the gaming journalism media. Not normally, no, you're right. How, how often do these kinds of relationships between press and sources get revealed outside of that area in your experience? Very rarely. Uh, usually it's embarrassing to the journalist, and unless, unless one of the journalist, uh, journalism magazines or write about it, The Quill or American Journalism Review, something like that writes about it, you're not going to find much coverage. Sometimes the New York Times might write about a particularly egregious situation where a reporter makes up stumped something or a reporter has a relationship that really crosses the line, uh, but not, not as a rule. Okay. And um, one last thing I'm wondering is, do these rules also apply for editorial writing as well as news writing, or are they held to a different standard? I would say that they apply doubly to editorial writing, because an editorial writing is an opinion, and why should I trust your opinion? if I don't believe that it is objective. That it, when, I mean, when I mean objective, you've reached a conclusion, but you've reached a conclusion through the objective an analysis of facts, searching out information, and then you bring your expertise and you say, this is what the truth of the matter is. And if that's the case, it certainly seems to me that I should believe you because that, that honest relationship, that truth-telling relationship, otherwise, no. Okay. Okay. Um... I'm trying to figure out how to word the next one. So would, would, uh, is it ethical at all to write an editorial about, say, your experience with a loved one going through some kind of problem? <laughs> you know, and I, I, think you'll find, I think you'll find that that happens quite regularly, but as long as they're identified as a loved one and that I see that I, the reader, that understand there, the there relationship. Is disclosure? Yes. Okay. This is, if I understand the relationship, I then have the ability to determine whether to believe you or not. Okay. And so it really is it's that disclosure issue. Cool. All right, thanks. So that's what we should be doing is disclosing. I think that's it. I mean, if you look at it, every advertisement on TV promoting any type of product has the little fine print, you know, in some cases, it, or the guy who speaks so fast you can't understand him. But we're trying to say to the, we're trying to say to the buyer, we're trying to say to the reader, you know, beware. It's your job to investigate to see what is going on here because the reader's not passive, the the viewer's not passive. They're trying to investigate themselves. So we need to disclose. They need to decide what it means. Okay. Thanks. That's everything I had in mind. Okay. Did it, that phone mess you up too bad? I, I hope. I hope not. I'm th I'm hoping that since the microphone's close to you, it won't block out anything you're okay. saying. Okay. But I guess I won't know until I uh, find out a couple hours from.